friends, uh, I have a lot of questions about what kind of a, uh, design software I use uh, on some of the uh, uh, items I make. And uh, a lot of guys just draw their uh, item right on the piece and then uh, engrave it, make it, whatever. They don't use any software at all. Um, where the software helps me is when I take a, I do a lot of custom orders. People call me up and say, hey, I used to have this buckle here and I'd like to have another one just like it. Can you make it? They send me a photograph and I start drawing on it. And then before I'll make that buckle, I will send them a drawing uh, detailing every piece on it and the price and everything and they have to approve that drawing before I'll start on it and uh, so that's where the design software comes in handy because it makes a real nice drawing uh, and to, to send these people and get it approved and if they want to change something you just go into your software move something around scale it up or down uh, and you can get the drawing changed, re reprint the drawing, send it back to them, and uh, get it approved the second time. Uh, anyway, uh, most of the time uh, we do, uh, I do uh, one drawing, maybe two, sometimes three, but not usually with the first drawing is, is pretty good. But anyway, uh, I use this design software on spurs, buckles, and all types of jewelry, and uh, the, the software I have, you're not going to want to buy it. The reason is, uh, I got it, I used to be a welder fabricator for a ranch, and I uh, had the means at that time to get a CNC plasma cutter, and it came with the software and it was a uh, plasma cam and the plasma cam software is what I use I recently contacted plasma cam to see what it would cost for someone to buy their software without buying a, a CNC machine just the software and I guess prices have gone way up but uh, it, it runs about almost four thousand dollars for just the software so you're probably not going to want to buy this software for uh, using on your jewelry and stuff but uh, you can look online uh, Sam Alfano uh, shows a lot of stuff on Corel Draw and uh, that he has real good luck with that there's other guys that use other things uh, I know some guys that uh, use uh, some of the architectural software and uh, I even got a, a software that's a uh, engineering type software that sometimes I use but this is not a way to uh, um, substitute for your art I don't draw my designs in the software I draw the designs by hand then I scan them into the computer, into the software, and I can straighten up my lines in my drawing. I can uh, scale it up or down, uh, but I rarely, there, there's, it's not a good software, the one I have, it's not a good software to be drawing with, uh, but I, over time I've got a lot of designs saved in my computer and my software program, and I can pull those designs out and put them on something else, scale them up, down, change them a little bit, whatever. But the first thing you need to do when you want to design a real nice buckle is to draw it out by hand, in my opinion. And uh, when you get it the way you want it, then scan it in, use your software to straighten it up or scale it or whatever you want to do. So anyway, um, I was going to show you this uh, software I have. It's, it's Plasma Cam. And like I say, probably I'm the only one, only jeweler using it, but I'm not sure. They they have a lot of machines out there, and I'm sure there's a lot of guys that have gotten a hold of this software. But anyway, uh, it is very expensive, and I guess uh, 
some of the others are too. Uh, Corel Draw I think is pretty expensive, but there's probably ways to get that stuff cheaper. I, I don't know all of that. But anyway, you can uh, Google some of that uh, or look on Sam Alfano's site. He has some schooling on some of that. And a software will help, really help you in some ways. So we're going to look at mine here, and I'll show you a few things I do with it. And, and this is just to show you how software can help you. Okay, I'm going to I've darkened the room up uh, a bunch to hopefully you can see this okay. Uh, this is uh, my spur band that I use and uh, I've got it it's about eight inches and I think this one is uh, seven eighths wide and I've got my uh, hanger holes here and my slots cut and everything and uh, this is the band that I cut out and use. Now I can print that design right there and I can paste that on uh, some metal and I can cut that out and I'll be right on the money. I also know where to drill my holes and everything. This was a, uh, I since it's a square drawing I scaled it and drew it in the software as to my specifications. Now this here is the swinger and the button and I can uh, get to my keyboard here I can now in this software you have to highlight all these pieces to move it and that's a little bit more difficult than some softwares I'm sure but anyway we're going to move this over to here and that will show us kind of where the swinger is going to be sitting we're going to copy that and we're going to bring a copy of it right here and then we're going to highlight this again and we're going to rotate it to fit on this other side I'm not sure exactly how much to rotate so I'm going to bring it up here okay now we can go and shift it upwards that's possibly about right right there okay now we have a drawing with our two swingers in it okay what we're going to do next is we can come down and we can scroll down here and we can look and we find uh, some shanks that I use, some shank designs I use, we find some rail patterns I use. Now the rail patterns are pretty hard to draw uh, and get them right so the software helps you align all these points to make sure they're correct but if you have a good drawing uh, of them outside of the computer you can scan it in and bring it into your software and then you have your drawing right there anyway we can go on down here we can pick and choose which route we're going to put in which uh, shank and I've only got a few in here I've got many many shank designs in this computer but you come on down here and you can actually make the drawing that you need to send your customer on the spurs that you're going to build. This particular one, I just cut the band where it would be normally from looking at it from the side and I put this top shank on it. Uh, this customer wanted a, a clover leaf a rowel so I've moved that on there. But I'll show you how easy it is to change the rowel. Let me uh, Go out here some okay now we can highlight this row and we can move it over here and we can come up here and get say this row here we can bring it down and we can set it in here and see if the customer likes that one it's whatever you your customer is wanting okay I'm gonna move that 
back over here and I'm going to bring say this one here it's a very popular route we're going to put it right here okay now we can zoom in here and we start designing our uh, overlays these are overlays that I drew on a piece of paper scan them in we can take this one here we can move it over here and fit it there we can take this one and we can move it over here and we can fit it right there uh, maybe they want some more design in there so we can uh, or maybe they just want their brand so say we take this brand we can put it right here and then you can print this and you'll have a drawing to send your customer and say is this the way you wanted this single mounted spur maybe the one on initial right here on this you can come over here to text and uh, you can put like say they want a M right here I got it all dark in here and I can't see my keyboard very well okay there we go um, so we're gonna have an M come up here in a minute there it is and say they want an M right there you can show them and add that to it if you want that M slanted with the swinger you can rotate it like this and move it over like that say they don't want a brand okay say well they decided they want a design instead of the brand they don't want the brand on there or say they want this brand on that button okay we delete the M we take the rocking H we bring it over here we come up here to scale right here and we scale it down And then we move it over here on the button and say they like that and then say they want some uh, real nice designs here and to move these things in this particular software you have to highlight everything so it takes some doings if it's a real fancy design but we can put this one right here and say they decided they want the M right here so we come back up here I should have kept the M instead of deleting it a while ago, but anyway, we're going to get it back. We'll put the M back here, and it'll come up in a minute. We'll move it into place right there. And then this is, gives you a drawing to send to the people. Okay, say they want something different. You can uh, move this off. You can move this rocking H out. You can move all of this drawing out. The slowest thing about this program is you have to highlight these things. But anyway, you bring that down here. And move this out too. And bring that there. Okay. Say that you want just their name on there. You can bring it up here and put it right there. If that's too much of a slant, you can rotate it. Like maybe you want it like that right there. You can put it right here. You know, so there's just all kinds of things you can do on spurs with this design software. Say it's a three-quarter band, you can scale this drawing down to three quarters. You can maybe it's a two and a quarter shank. You can scale this shank up to two and a quarter. You can scale this shank up to two and a half. Uh, you can do all kinds of scaling in software. And you can save all this stuff. And then you have all these things to access. But my catalog of all this artwork and stuff, I have drawn and scanned into the computer and then refined it within the software. Okay, let's go. 
two buckles. We're going to zoom over here and say you're making a trophy buckle and you you want just an oval design. Well here's an oval and we can put things on there but say we want to have all kinds of beading and stuff on this buckle. Well what we're going to probably do is we're going to cut out this buckle about that size. We're not going to cut it uh, like this. We're going to do that after we get all the beading on it. But anyway, we have to send the customer a drawing of what we're going to make. So we're going to come down here. We're going to highlight. I've drawn all these beads on here. We're going to highlight all of them. And like I say, that takes a little time. Well, not too bad. We're going to highlight all these beads. And, if, and another thing, you can select all, and this can go a lot faster. But I've got so many uh, items on this page that it would select everything on the page. So that would be a hassle. So I'm doing this separately. Uh, because I've put all this stuff on the page just to show you how this software works. Okay, we almost got it here. Okay, now we're going to move this bead up here. We're going to put it right into place. Okay, so there's our buckle with the beading on it. We can show them that. Now, we want to put some designs on it so we're going to come down here you got to bear with me on some of this is a little more common okay this is a design I drew and I got it scanned in here and I've saved this design to use for future use we're going to go in and the more complicated design you have the harder it is to highlight everything because you can't have if these were circles and complete units, you could just click on it and it would highlight the whole thing. But since there's a lot of intersections, I have to highlight them a little at a time. So I'm going through highlighting it all. And it has to be highlighted to be scaled. It has to be highlighted to be deleted, moved, copied. Uh, so... That's what I'm doing here. I'm going to move this up on that buckle. I've already scaled it, I believe, so we're going to move it over here. We're going to zoom in on this. And then you can center it up. And then you can put whatever design you want in here. Uh, I'm doing a buckle right now with a spur like this on it. I drew this spur and I scanned it in my computer and then I refined it. And uh, say I want to put this spur in the middle of that buckle. We can highlight it all. Okay, and then we can scale it down. Okay, we're going to move it up here. In the center of the buckle. And there we go. And we can put a name down here. We can put a name up here in an arched fashion, whatever we want to do. We can put Rodeo Champion, uh, whoever's name, you know, John Doe, whatever. And then we can print this and send it to the customer. And I'm going to print this one just so you can see how it looks on print. We're going to come over here to print preview. It's going to show us what the drawing is going to look like, and then we're going to print it. And I will show you that in a minute when I get these lights turned on. 
Okay, there's something else I want to show you. Uh, jewelry. Oh, here's one more type of buckle right here. This is just a Ranger buckle. I, I made this pattern before I take the bar out for Doman. And here it is without the bar in it. And these are silver overlays. And I've designed them and I'm going to put them on the buckle. Like that. I'm just moving them onto the buckle. And then this is a cotton bowl. I've done a couple or three of these. And I'll put it there. And then I'll put initials right here on the keeper. And I'll send this to the customer and say, hey, this is how you want it. It doesn't have the engraving in here, but I will be engraving that. Now, say you have a... Uh, I'll say you have a piece of silver that is four by three. Okay, this square here is four by three. You want to make you a cut pattern to cut your silver out. So you can bring it down here and you can fit these pieces in here the best you uh, can to save room on your silver. You can see here how I can get all this in there. And so I save, I print this and I can glue this onto my silver and, it, and it'll give me a cut pattern and I'm saving all this other silver instead of having it all over the silver. So you can arrange it and I can go in here in depth and move these around to where I, I waste very little silver this way. That's a great thing with this software. Okay, now we're going to do one more thing here. I'm going to show you a piece of jewelry right here. This is a turquoise flower. And uh, this is the bottom piece right here I designed. I want to put all three of these together. This is the bottom piece of silver. This is the middle piece of silver. And this is the setting, which will be the stone. I can take this. I can move it over here on top of here and say, okay, I'm going to solder it right there. And I'm going to put the setting right here. And I've got a drawing of a real nice pendant. And all this can be engraved properly. Another thing I can do is over here. Uh, this is a Texas design. I cut out this piece out of one piece of silver. I cut out this piece out of this piece of silver. And it will solder on top of here like that. And then they want some initials in the center. So, whoops. So I move the initials in the silver right there. And I can print this and send this to them and say, hey, is this how you want it? So, you know, that's the, the help you get with software. Okay, I hope this uh, helps you out seeing the software. Here's my print of that buckle I drew on there a while ago. And it shows how it is. And this is the drawing, you know, it makes real fine drawings. So it's a real good drawing to cut with. You can take this out, you can paste it on your silver and cut it out. Uh, all your overlays and everything, cut it out real nice. Because it's a real fine line drawing. Like I say, you don't want to buy this software because it's very expensive but this is the information on it i'll also post this in the description if some reason you are interested in it maybe you can find uh, uh, something else that a little more reasonable uh, this is a great software it can do all kinds of things and if you happen to have a cnc machine well it can do that too anyway uh uh, Corel Draw is probably the most popular with engravers and artisans, and uh, but this is what I had from my previous uh, line of work, and that's what I've always used, and I hope I don't ever lose it because I would be lost without it. I'm real schooled in this software, and it's easy for me to use. So anyway, hopefully that'll answer uh, the questions that everybody's been having on how I'm designing my things, and. Uh, like I say, you can't ever substitute uh, hand-drawn artwork. That's what you want to learn first. 
and then draw your designs, draw your uh, everything up, and then import it into your software and do what you want to with it. You can scale it, uh, change it, rotate it, whatever you need to do. So thanks, hey, like and subscribe my video. I appreciate it. See you all next time.